Hey y'all, everybody makes mistakes. You've heard it said a million times. And accidents happen. And when it comes to the spoil board on my Avid CNC, there's no exception to that rule. Now I am famous for saying that I don't baby my spoil board. And I don't. I figure that's what it's there for, to take the brunt of the abuse. With it being so big, it's also a nice horizontal flat surface. Who can resist? Now, I don't beat on it or bang on it because it's not a workbench. But I'll admit I will cover up the surface with some uh, craft paper and I'll paint something. Or I'll get down my pipe clamps and I'll glue up a panel. I figure. That's okay. I'm not damaging anything and I'm not using the CNC anyway. Why not? Even after just a few months of use like that, between accidents like dropping a heavy pipe clamp and denting the MDF or even knocking a chunk out of it, or even in CNC work, driving screws to hold down a panel or using my composite nailer to nail down a panel. Eventually it's going to start showing its age. Especially when you glue up a panel then surface it smooth, forget to change the file you drew up for that project, and then carve 330 seconds or just shy of two and a half millimeters into the spoil board. You do a bunch of things like that and it starts to show its age. Now there's a lot of ways to recover from that. Yeah, I could remove that piece of MDF, put down another one, then I'm going to have to resurface it. Well, I'm going to have to resurface it anyway. So why not repair it? and not worry about removing and replacing a piece of MDF. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to show you the steps I took to repair this spoil board, then resurface it nice and flat, give it a new coat of sealer, and now I'm ready to drive on. If shooting YouTube videos has taught me anything, it's taught me that I'm going to get practice in whatever it is I'm doing, because there's a high likelihood I'm going to have to do it twice. In this case, uh, what I probably should have done twice was show you how I repaired all the screw holes and all of the nail holes in my spoil board. Because, as you've heard with other YouTube channels, somehow that footage got corrupted and I couldn't recover it. Basically, it's a very simple thing to do involving a hand drill with a quarter inch brad point bit. Now, you don't have to use a brad point bit, a standard twist drill, or even a spade bit will do the same job. And some wooden dowel. In my case, we're talking quarter inch brad point bit and a quarter inch wooden dowel. For those of you overseas, I don't know your common dowel sizes, but match them accordingly. Then some standard wood glue. The brand doesn't matter. Hashtag not sponsored. Basically all I did was I went to those screw holes and with my, using my brad point bit, drilled down roughly a half inch roughly 12 millimeters for those of you on the metric system. Then put a little bit of glue in that hole, put the dowel down into that hole, spin it a couple of times to distribute that glue. Then take my flush cut saw and don't cut it flush with the t spoil board, cut it just slightly proud of the surface of the spoil board. Then after cutting the dowel loose from that plug, take a hammer, tap, tap, tap. I'm probably not going to drive it flush, but that's okay. Then we'll let that glue dry and move on to the next step. After going around and plugging all of the holes with that wooden dowel, 
I needed to let that glue set up and cure. While it was doing that, I decided it was then time to take care of the big gouges that couldn't just be patched with a wooden dowel. And what I used to patch those gouges was good old automotive body filler. Now here in the US, we tend to use the generic name Bondo, which is technically a brand name, hashtag not sponsored. I guess in some places like Australia and New Zealand, they call it Bog. It's the standard body filler that you would use to fix up your old vehicle. Now, in all of my years in woodworking, I can tell you that this stuff is handy to have around the shop. It cuts real easy, it sands beautifully, and even though you can't really stain it, it will take primer and paint perfectly. I mean, that's what it's designed to do. It'll also take a clear coat, but it's pretty ugly. So, there you go. But it's real handy for filling in cracks and joints on a painted project. And it's especially handy for handling all the big gouges in the surface of a spoil board. Mixing the body filler per the instructions on the can is fairly straightforward. You mix it in small batches so you can get it all applied before it starts to harden. You have to work fairly quickly with this stuff or you'll end up with a lump of curing body filler on your mixing board. I'm applying it fairly heavily in an attempt to fill all these cuts and gouges, knowing that I'm going to have low spots and I'll need to go back and apply more. And here's a shot of the filler as applied to the major damage. I did an initial surfacing using my older surfacing bit. I had let the body filler cure overnight, but I wasn't sure if that was enough curing time. So I didn't want to experiment with my good surfacing bit. I'd rather mess up my old bit than my new one. And I just manually drove the gantry around to machine the filler and the wooden dowels. And here's what the spoil board looked like after that initial surfacing. You can see the darker spots are low spots that are going to need more filler. And you can see where I drove the gantry around, surfacing down the wooden dowels. I went around with a felt pen and marked low spots and gouges so that I was sure to get them all when I mixed my next coat of filler. And once again, I mixed it thoroughly, applying it in small batches, and let it cure overnight before surfacing. For the final surface, I went ahead and used my 15 degree V-bit and set my XY0 
then swapped it out for my good surfacing bit and surfaced the entire spoil board nice and flat. I removed 10 thousandths of an inch from the entire surface of the spoil board and it came out nice and smooth. I was also able to go back with a fairly sharp old wood chisel and refine the edges of the MDF strips. I then sealed the surface of the spoil board with two coats of shellac to ward off any problems caused by high humidity. Freshly machined MDF is very thirsty and it absorbed that first coat of shellac like a sponge. So that's all there is to it, really. It's pretty simple, it's pretty basic. Just fill in any holes or gouges or dents, surface it, coat it if you need to, and you're ready to drive on. I know, it's pretty basic, and it's not quite the type of video you expect out of me. It's certainly a lot shorter. But, you know, it was something that I needed to do and I figured somebody would get some value out of this. Now, even though this was pretty basic, I'm sure that some of you are gonna have some questions about what I did, how I did it, or what I used to do it with. So this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me any question you'd like about anything I've demonstrated in this video or any of my previous videos. That's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Before we wrap this up, I'd like to say a special thank you to all of my channel members. And remember, channel members, check the community tab for a link to tomorrow's members-only live stream. If you would like information on how to become a channel member, just click that join button right next to the subscribe button. A panel will pop up and a video will play that'll tell you all about channel membership. So I hope to see everyone this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, whether you become a channel member or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Y'all take care.